Hi there, we're so happy that you could join us today. If it's your first time here, everything that's going to happen here is something new. If it's not your first time, please join us. It's going to be fantastic. There's worship for a change and it's going to be a very nice worship experience. So we really hope that you enjoy this with us. Please join us as we worship God and listen to the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you were here. We thank you that you are not restricted or limited by technology or us not being in the same room. We thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people and that you are with us wherever we are, in our homes, in our cars, in our bedrooms, wherever we're watching this. We thank you, Father, that you are inhabiting the praises of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You belong. 
belongs the glory Through every loss or victory My soul will rise to only bring you glory
sing out. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. Oh, it all. We give you the highest praise. Oh, you deserve it. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your This is my daily bread. 
This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. Lord, today we want to thank you that you are never far from us. We want to thank you that the very air we breathe is saturated with your presence, with your power, with your fullness. 
We thank you that we get to spend time in your presence. We thank you that your living presence is alive in us today. Lord, wherever we are today, in different places, in the lounge, in the bedroom, wherever we're tuning in from, God, we know that your presence is with us. And today, Lord, we want to speak out the living, holy presence of God over our situations. And we want to say thank you. Thank you that you are always with us and that we have someone fighting for us that is bigger than what we're facing. There's so much to praise you for today. There's so much to thank you for. But today, Lord, we especially want to thank you for your holy presence and we will yield to it. We will give way for it. And we will follow wherever you lead us, God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Hi there. I trust you've been enjoying this worship experience with us today. And even now in the message, I'm really praying that there would be something specifically for you, that God would be ministering to you where you are, where you're tuning in from today, so that you will have a true revelation of who and what God is. Now, now, we are busy with a series called We Are the Church. And this series is really about looking at the values that we should stand by no matter what. And, you know, those non-negotiables of our Christian living, those things that should stay consistent no matter what season or, or what situation we are facing. Because in uncertain times, like we're facing at the moment, we need to make very sure what the certain things are. So some of the topics that we've covered so far in the last five weeks actually is, is being a loving family, being disciples. We are worshipers. We've looked at being servants of the truth while being a safe place at the same time and how to be part of his kingdom, how to have a kingdom mindset and have a heart for the lost, have a heart for people. If you've missed any of these messages, go to YouTube, go check them out. They're still there so that you don't have to miss anything at all. But anyway, so today, you know, I, I, there's no way we can say we're done with a series on values because Christian values are, are so vast, so beautiful, so incredibly rich that I don't want to end the series, but we are finishing up today and we're finishing it with, with something incredibly important. And I don't, it's, it's more than just a value, you know, because this is, some, maybe even the most vital part, you know, of effective Christian living, because we're looking at this topic of surrender. We're looking at this, this idea of surrender, because today, just for a couple of moments, I want to share on more of Him and less of me. And I want you to turn to your neighbor, if you're watching it with someone, and I want you to say to them, more of Him, less of you. And then I want you to turn to your spouse and I want you to say, I want you to make this promise so long, more of him, less of me. And why I say your spouse is because spouses are incredibly good at, at keeping you accountable for these kind of things anyway. So we get this phrase, this idea, more of him, less of me from John the Baptist. And we read this in John 3, verse 30 to 31. And it says, he must become greater, I must become less. He must become greater, I must become less. This is when people were asking, you know, are you the Messiah? Are you the chosen one? He's like, no, 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 no. Someone's coming. And he must become greater and I must become less. He goes on to say in verse 31, he says, The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth, speaking of himself and us. And he speaks as one from the earth. 
The one who comes from heaven is above all. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who comes from the earth, he's speaking of himself. He's saying, listen, I'm not worthy. We are humans. And the best we could possibly do is to speak as someone who is from the earth. See, John the Baptist understood his subordinate role to Jesus. He understood that comparing himself to Jesus and in relation to Jesus, well, he, he's just not standing shoulder to shoulder. And then he supports this when, he, when after he says, you know, he must become greater, I must become less, he is better, the one who is from above is much better than the one who is from the earth. And he supports this and he says, well, his thinking is better, his doing is better, his knowing is better, everything he is, the one who is from above is above all. Oh. And then he says, the one who's from the earth, referring to himself, and, and listen, it absolutely uh, you know, applies to you and me as well. He says, the best we can do is to speak like one that's from the earth. The best we could possibly do as being from the earth is to speak as one who does. And my, my, my thing here is for us to understand that just as John the Baptist knew it, we are limited. We are limited. Listen, we are gifted. That's a fact. And God has given each and every one of us giftings and talents that we should steward well. But at the end of the day, the one who is from above is above all. But this is an incredible opportunity. And, and why I like this specific scripture so much is because John the Baptist is saying he must become greater, ongoing, always more, becoming, continually developing this process of becoming greater. And, and in processes, you know, I think of people, you know, when, when we first get married, you know, then that first couple of months, you realize how selfish you are, how self-centered you are. You know, you all of a sudden realize I might be clashing a little bit with ideas and, and I am I, you know, I'm so excited to hear how people talk about it because you should listen to their speech. They always say, yeah, but he should have known. He should have done it differently. She should have not expected this. Rather than saying, it's me. I wanted it a bit different than what it is right now and I don't know how to deal with it. But we need to go through this process of, of laying down your, your selfish ambition in marriage. And then you have kids and all those with kids will know that there is no such... There, I don't want to say there's no such thing because there is, but there really isn't much space for selfishness when you have children. When there's little mini humans running around the house, selfishness goes out of the window. But in these processes, one learns to... And this is not a negative thing, by the way, but, but you learn to maybe die a little bit to self. You, you learn maybe just a little bit of... I must become less. I must become less. See, and it's in this journey and relationship with God, you know, when yeah, maybe at first we're just a little bit selfish, we're a bit self-centered in our expectation and what we're doing, but in our journey of, of getting to know God and so significantly getting to trust God as we spend time with Him and in His Word, we, we too learn to relent to Him. We too learn to get to this place where John the Baptist was when he says, I must become less, he must be more. He was saying, I want less of me, more of him. Because the one who is from above is above everything. We read in Philippians 3 verse 8, it says, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I've discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ. Paul got it. Paul got it. Paul got this less of me, more of him thing. Because I think sometimes it's easier to let go of things than to let go of that selfishness that's inside of us. That headstrongness, that... You won't tell me nothingness because ultimately we need to relent to the Spirit of God. See, we as a church, and this is where our important value for this week really comes in, is we as a church should be Spirit-filled and Spirit-led. 
We should be spirit filled, full of the Holy Spirit and led by the Holy Spirit. And why I'm saying first that he must become more, more of him, less of us, because it's not just about accepting the guidance of the Holy Spirit, but it's about putting yourself second in relation to it. Because sometimes we want to say, yes, we're guided by the Holy Spirit, but, but also my opinions, you know, and my ideas, my, my knowledge. I mean, this is, this is like this. We are on the same level, but we need to start cultivating an openness to the Holy Spirit in our lives. And this is a process as we grow in relationship with God, obviously. And see, we must just continually do this. Because continually, as we spend time with Him, as we grow in our relationship with Him, we need to learn to relent of ourselves for His power, for His glory, for His guidance. Because listen, this is the only way to live this Christian life is to truly let go of yourself. Listen to this in 1 Corinthians 4.20. It says, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. It is this present reign in our lives, this kingdom, this new life we have in Jesus. It's not just empty talk. It's not just a lot of this. It is living out this incredible resurrecting power of God that is now residing within us. It is a life dedicated to Jesus and his mission. You know, in Acts 1 verse 8, and we know this so well, just, this is Jesus talking about when the Holy Spirit is going to come. And it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will be empowered by the Spirit of God to live out this kingdom that Jesus started, that Jesus planted. We as the church should be empowered by the Spirit of God to live out this kingdom that is now in us. And we spoke about the kingdom just, just last week and, and we said that we need to be the salt, we need to be the light. But the only way to do this is if we are truly empowered by the Spirit of God. Because listen, you, you cannot live His way without His guidance. It's impossible to live out his ways without his guidance. And we see this in John 16, verse 13. Yes, there's a lot of scriptures today. It says, but when he, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into truth. See, this is what the Spirit does, is He guides us into truth. And just before that, actually, He says that, listen, there's so much more I want to teach you, but you're just not ready for it. But when the Spirit of truth comes, He's the one that's going to guide you into all truth, and He's going to teach you the things that I have been speaking about. And then it says in Romans 8.14, it says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. It's a proof of a relationship with Him. The only way to truly live out this Christian life, to, to be effective in what we should be doing, is to be relenting ourselves to the Holy Spirit. See, being Spirit-filled and Spirit-led is not just about acknowledging the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's not just about knowing the Scriptures on, on the gifts of the Spirit. It's, those things are secondary to putting yourself second. See, if we want to start becoming more uh, powerful living people, it's about giving ourselves up for His purposes. Because even in the power of the Holy Spirit, He doesn't give us this resurrecting power so that we might boast about it, but He gives us so that we might fulfill the call that He has given us to live out and to make disciples and to be the salt and the light See, following His guidance, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us, you know, relenting our lives to Him is a mark of relationship. And we must cultivate this relationship and relent of ourselves. See, this is all I'm talking about today is, is the fact that we must become less. And he must become more. His presence in our lives must become more. See, Especially during a season like we're facing at the moment, you know, I mean, don't you want the one who holds tomorrow 
to be leading you in this time. See, you and I don't even know what tomorrow holds, but we know the one who holds tomorrow. And the only real way to live out effectively as a Christian is to rely completely on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I say that because here's the reality, is you and I will be influenced by this world at all times. We will face things in our lives that will influence us, you know, thoughts that would influence us, people that would influence us. And if we are not grounded in the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, if we are not living a life of submission to the Holy Spirit, then what's going to happen is we're going to be tossed back and forth with every coming wave, every new idea, every new crazy word or, or every new um, news article or whatever. If we are not grounded in the truth, the Word of God, if we are not guided by the Holy Spirit, then you see, you see, we're going to be tossed back and forth. His influence in our lives needs to be incredibly prevalent. In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 to 20, it says, Don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and who was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. And I think that's so incredible because it's saying your body is a temple. It houses the very spirit of God. So you need to live out an honoring life. And see, the body can only follow instructions. That's all this physical body can do. It can only follow what you tell it to do. You have total and complete control at this very moment. Put out your hand in front of you. Close it into a fist. You are telling yourself to do that because I'm telling you to do that. Because sometimes we use our bodies for good things and we go out and we exercise and we get fit and we look after ourselves and we do, you know, maybe a bit less McDonald's and a bit (laughs) bit more vegetables and other times we don't do that. And at the end of the day, it's all all the choices that we're making. See, honoring God with your body is not going to start with with how you do things physically, with with the you know, are you going to exercise? Are you going to you know tune into church? Are you going to serve? Are you going to love? Are you going to hold your wife's hand? Those things, yes, that is honoring, but that's not where it starts. Honoring God is going to start up here. Honoring God is going to start with the the decision-making processes, if if you're actually going to live a life that's going to honor God with your actions. See, honoring God with your body means steering your, your actions through decisions. And the only way to make consistently good decisions is to allow the Holy Spirit to influence us. I believe that is one of the keys to consistency in decision making is to have the power of the Spirit of God living through us and we allowing it to have an influence in everything we're doing. See, we all going to have influences in our lives. You and I have influences in our lives. I mean, we all have an inner circle. An inner circle, you know, the, the people or the things that surround us that... That, that we allow to, to be the most influential voices in our lives. You decide that on a daily basis. Sometimes, unfortunately so, sometimes people decide beforehand, these are the people I'm going to allow. But you have an inner circle. Your inner circle at the moment might be your spouse and, and the news channel and, and something like that. And, and every day, you don't really know why today am I not feeling great. I was fine last night. I was in a good space last night when I went to bed. And now, all of a sudden, I'm not doing well. Well, let me ask you a question. Who are you allowing to be the biggest influences in your life? Who are you allowing to be the influences in how you act, in what you think, in how you think, in what you do? Because we have an inner circle. Even Jesus had an inner circle. 
Even Jesus had an inner circle. He had Peter, James, and John. Those were his inner circle people. We don't really know why, but he did choose them for a specific reason because no one was added just because of association. I mean, even poor Andrew, you know, Peter's brother didn't even make the cut. I mean, imagine how that must have felt. Here comes Jesus. He chooses your brother to, to be in his inner circle and you're standing there. But anyway, what I'm saying is don't default people into your inner circle. Don't default things into into the most influential positions in your life that is going to determine how you're going to live. Don't default on that. Don't allow defaults in that because we often consider who our, our friends are, maybe our best friends or, or closest companions, but you know, we choose them because we enjoy their company. We enjoy, you know, being with them. You know, successful people surround themselves with successful people. So, you know, you, you sometimes surround yourself with people for a purpose and you draw close to them for a purpose. And maybe it's a little selfish, but I don't think it's necessarily wrong. But my question is, do we consider the influence that some people have on our thinking? Do we consider the influence that some things have on our thinking? Let me tell you something. I want to be harsh for just a moment. It's because I love you so much. And here's the problem I'm having is some of us are more influenced by the spirit of Facebook than what we are by the spirit of God. Some of us are more influenced by the spirit of Instagram than what we are by the very living, powerful spirit of God. Some of us are allowing our thoughts, our actions, our lives, our bodies, our everything to be determined by News 24 and not by the very presence and powerful Spirit of God. So this is why I want to ask you today. Who's in your inner circle? Who's in your inner circle are we getting to a place where we can say more of him more of him i want more of him in my life i want more of him in my thinking i want more of him in my decisions i want more of him in my actions more of him less of me because if that's you today if you're at that place where, where this is your desire more of him less of me then you need to allow the spirit of god into your inner circle you need to make the decision to relent to Him and to say, Lord, we want to be filled by your, your, your presence, Your Spirit. We want to be led by Your Spirit. We want to be guided by Your Spirit. We want more of You and less of us. So here's my questions for you today. I want to ask you, is the living Spirit the very Holy Spirit of God living in you? Is He in your inner circle? Is He an influence? And the second question I want to ask you is, is He actually at the core of your decision making? Of why you do what you do? Are you being guided by the Spirit of God in your decisions, in your marriage with your children, at work, at church, are you serving God in a way that is led by His Spirit? Our inner circle will always have a direct influence on our, on our decisions, our speech, our actions. So it must be in submission to the very Spirit of God. I want to pray for you today and as we close, and, and if you do not have the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, Jesus says that, if you who are worldly people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven not pour out His, parent, His, His presence, His Spirit on those who ask? And today I want to ask with you, there where you are, where you're watching from, I want to ask with you. And I want to trust that God will pour out His Spirit on you even this morning. And then I want to challenge you to go out from there to allow the Holy Spirit into your inner circle and open your life, your decision making, your, your family, your business, your everything to His guidance. Lord, I thank you that today we get to just spend a couple of moments together in your presence. I pray today, Lord, 
for every single person who is hungry out there asking. And if you're asking, won't you just receive and believe that you will receive the Spirit of God? Lord, I pray right now that you would pour out your Spirit on every person in Jesus' name. You say, Lord, that if we ask, we will receive. Well, today we're asking. Won't you come anoint us afresh with your, with your Spirit, Lord, with your presence, with your power. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us will continue on this journey of, of more of you and less of us, of relenting ourselves to your Spirit and your presence in our lives so that everything will come into submission to you. We want to be like John the Baptist who understood his limitation and said the one who is from above is above all. And today we want to say the one who is from above, well, not just Holy Spirit, do we want you in our inner circle, but we want you above everything in our lives. We want you above every decision. We want you above every action. Holy Spirit, we want your influence in our marriages, in our relationship with our children. We want your influence in our businesses. Holy Spirit, come on. We, we're going to take a step back from today onward and we're going to say we will be guided by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. If you want more information about the church or anything that you're looking for, there's a number down in the description. We hope to see you again next week. Goodbye.